The crops that existed at the dawn of human civilization were vastly different from the plants we have available to us today. Since the beginning of agriculture, farmers and gardeners have altered the genetic code of plants and animals, even if they weren't aware of it at the time. This first took the form of selective breeding, in which farmers preserved the seeds of their biggest and best fruits and vegetables to plant in the next crop season. When disease and blight struck, farmers preserved only the seeds from those plants that resisted pest or disease problems. Evolution was essentially accelerated through this process because only the plants with the best traits were allowed to reproduce in the next crop season. Modern crops may differ from their ancestors physically and genetically. In the 1500s, farmers discovered a way to swap DNA between plants through a process called crossbreeding. Crossbreeding, or hybridization, means inseminating one species of plant with the pollen of another to produce an entirely new species. Crossing two plants is an imprecise science, however, and in the process, hundreds or even thousands of genes are transferred between species. This can result in a new plant with the best characteristics of both its parents, or a completely useless hybrid that contains none of the desired traits. Traditional crossbreeding methods have produced desirable results, such as the Brocco flower, a hybrid cross between broccoli and cauliflower, the delicious tangelo, a cross between a tangerine and a grapefruit, or more recently a darker tomato, which contains the pigment anthocyanin, which gives grapes their antioxidant properties. An innovative new science, called genetic modification, or genetic engineering, makes this process more accurate by allowing scientists to select the specific gene that expresses a trait, extract it, and insert it into the genetic structure of another organism. In this sense, genetic modification is both simpler biologically and more complex technologically than traditional crossbreeding. The new technology can give breeders a more precise choice on which characteristics their crops will have. How different are biotech techniques compared to traditional breeding methods? Traditional breeding techniques involve using the germplasm, the pollen from related plants, to fertilize another's flower. It is accomplished by the sexual reproduction of two plants or animals and can only work within the same genus or species. The resulting seeds will then produce a plant with a combination of traits from the two parents. Once the new seeds are produced, breeders grow them to see which specific seeds have the most desirable traits. Unfortunately, it can often take many years to produce desirable plants through traditional breeding. You can think of the genetic material that is being combined in the traditional method as being placed in the slot machine of sexual breeding. Once the lever is pulled, you've controlled for all the possible combinations, but not always for the specific combination you're looking for. So you have to keep putting in your money and pulling the lever until you hit the jackpot, which would be a plant or animal with the desired characteristics you're looking for. Genetic engineering is a lot more focused than the traditional methods. No longer is the outcome determined by the random combination of the many genes the parents are carrying. Rather, scientists directly insert the most desirable DNA into the new plant. Scientists can use the DNA of completely different organisms, such as animals or even synthetic DNA combinations created in the lab, and cross those with the plant genes. The new genes are inserted into the host cells by means of a modified bacterium that will carry the desired gene or through the use of an instrument called a gene gun. Scientific knowledge of the common crown gall bacterial disease on ornamental plants provided the foundation for current genetic engineering. The crown gall bacteria contains a plasmid, a genetic particle that moves the bacteria into the plant DNA and reprograms the plant to produce food for the bacteria and create a tumor-like structure. This natural process found in crown gall was then modified so that desirable genes could be inserted into the bacteria and then inserted into plants. The gene gun uses compressed air to fire a mixture of tiny inert metal particles mixed with thousands of copies of the desired gene into the plant cells. The inserted genes are incorporated into the DNA of the plant, and these cells will be grown to form the improved plants. The insertion of foreign DNA into plant material will produce a transgenic plant. These GM plants add helpful characteristics to the farmer's crops. Resistance to pesticides and the ability for the plant to create its own natural defenses, which can kill insects such as the corn borer, are a few of those helpful characteristics currently in some genetically modified crops. These new plants don't have to go through long growing periods to see which desirable traits have resulted because we have rigged the slot machine. The only combinations possible 
are those that lead to the jackpot of the traits we wanted. In this way, new plant varieties can be developed over the course of months instead of years or decades. So as agriculture has progressed over the centuries, each new generation has brought with it their own new sets of challenges and rewards.